Hi, hi guys. My name is Hijaz. I'm a developer architect in Advania UK. Um, uh, here's my LinkedIn and um, Twitter handle or X handle. Please get in touch. Um, you know, for if you have any question or uh, queries regarding Microsoft 365 and uh, and and Azure or Copilot, um, I love to talk about and share uh, insights. So today I'm presenting a um, a topic uh, on on automating employees onboarding. Um, now, so the today we looked in in terms of the presentation. We have we're going to look. We're going to talk about what I'm, uh, what's the automating uh, onboarding uh, employees uh, application look like and what it does. Then demo, we can quickly look into the code and then if there's any questions at the end. So um, the main purpose of this um, was uh, uh, I wanted to some scenario. I recently I worked on a client app where um, I have to use the Microsoft Graph SDK batching and that Previously, I used to. If you guys have, you know, uh, used the, I, I used previously few, uh, quite a few times, a, uh, Microsoft Graph API batching, not the SDK one, and there was always a limitation. This you can only process 20 requests at a time, and then you have to manage that limitation in your code by yourself. So recently, the, um, I came across. Uh, uh, the article in on Microsoft documents where now the SDK, the latest version of SDK, Microsoft SDK, support batching, and uh, uh, so end up using that uh, Microsoft SDK batching. And what happened was I was dealing a nearly 2,000, 3,000 uh, uh, records, and and the good job for uh, the good, good good point for this SDK batching was is I don't have to do any uh, handling any uh, limitation handling in my code. Everything is had uh, happening behind the scene automatically. So that's a mass, big big plus. So I can only concentrate on my business logic than handling the limitation myself. So uh, so and then end up building a, this um, uh, automating employee onboarding uh, app app. So to demonstrate that. So basically, what we're going to do today is to um, uh, we is the SPFX app um, where we can import um, some uh, employees from CSV or could be from SharePoint list. And then what we want to do sometimes they we need to do so many tasks when we uh, onboard the employees might be uh, uh, updating their um, groups, uh, departments, update, uh, uh, putting them into a, some sorts of teams, giving them certain permission or something. So there are always, you know, tasks to do for each individual employee when we onboard them. So we'll look into that, how we can automate them and uh, and use the Microsoft Graph SDK batching uh, to do that. So a key features in this one uh, is we're going to import the bulk user uh, with via CSV, use the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Graph SDK batching, and then uh, we'll also logged into the ship and list as well for the auditing purposes so we can go back and check for each user uh, what task has been completed or what hasn't been completed kind of thing. So uh, for the architecture for this uh, app is we're going to first of all um, uh, import the user uh, from CSV then uh, on uh, with the onboarding web part we'll take that import from CSV and then pass this to Azure function. Azure function then um, go and use the Microsoft Graph has to give a batching uh, and it does these three things, updating the user department, joining the Microsoft Teams, email and send the email notification to each individual user. Once it's done the processing and the Azure function then send a notification uh, back that is done. And at the same time, when it's done all these three tasks, uh, is law is also logging into SharePoint list as well for individual users. So they, you know, they, who, who, whoever is running the uh, is this app, they can go back and check uh, the status, like you know, for each individual user what has been completed. So, um, so let's let's jump on a demo uh, quickly. Uh, so, so that's um, onboarding uh, web part uh, where. Um, uh, we have to, I'm going to just uh, select the CSV file. So CSV file has, um, I'm onboarding CSV file, it has a three user just for the um, uh, simplicity uh, so that it doesn't take too much time in the demo to process these. So what we need is basically we need the email address, here is the email address, here is the you know, department I wanted to add them into it. So things we're going to do, user, updating the user department, joining the Microsoft Teams, uh, email notification. So if I hit, 
proceed. And uh, if I show you on this side, uh, that's how your functions locally running, which is basically processing each user now. So that's processing then the next user. Um, so while it's processing, so one of them is already processed. So if I can show you uh, the final emails. Um, so if I go in here while it's processing all of them. Right, so you already completed the presence. You can see here. Uh, and then you can go back to, so it's completed the department team membership notification. And if I'll go to the shipment list and it's also logged um, for each individual user is processed. Uh, it's done the department teams notification and process on completed on. So you can basically have some analysis and some sort of a logging that you can confirm that has been completed on what date. Uh, if we show you the email quickly uh, for each individual user, um, you, you can they will probably be getting some email as well saying okay this is what you've been uh, the teams you have joined this is your updated department kind of thing so yeah you can send that email via the max grab sdk as well so jumping on a code um so right so so first of all uh from the share uh, spfx point of view So if I simply go into the container and then go to um, induction web components. So this is the main components where everything is happening. So uh, so if I have just shown you what's going on. So first of all, uh, we have this. Uh, I'm using a com library called uh, Mentine Core uh, where I'm using the stepper. So stepper component is here. Um, so what happening is I'm dropping and it's used behind the scene. It's used the drop zone component to drop the files. So uh, so when I click uh, drop the file, so I have this pass CSV file method, which basically extracting uh, data from the CSV name, email department, uh, and then putting into the object. So in the table, so I can see and the user can see and when they hit uh, on click on the onboarding, start the onboarding. I'm calling it Azure function, uh, which is running locally at the moment. It could be, um, you know, running on the Azure as well. So, uh, and the Azure function is doing all the job behind the scene. And once it's done, and then it's sending the request back here, yeah, everything has been completed. So, going back to the Azure function, um, just so what's that code look like? So, um, so if I just close all of them, close tab. Uh, so in the program file, so one thing which I uh, initialize uh, dependency injection for uh, share, um, a PNP core library for because I'm logging into SharePoint uh, list. I could have used Microsoft Graph, but I, uh, uh, I had this uh, plugged in initially. Then I uh, using uh, plugged in the Microsoft Graph. So yes, yeah, so I'm using the PNP core uh, for uh, SharePoint logging. Then I have a Microsoft Graph uh, service as well. So if I quickly go to Microsoft Graph service, where the actual magic is happening uh, on this method, user onboarding. So the request details will be a list of all the user coming from uh, on this onboarding function, where I'm just calling this uh, graph service as user onboarding request detail. So if I go back, so first of all, I get the client uh, graph client. And uh, that's it's the base using the Azure identity uh, um, library. So this is the separate helper uh, function. So once I got the graph client, I'm using the app um, app only um, permissions to get the graph client because the user's delegate permission is not needed in this case. So no, I'm, this is where I'm processing each user. So um, so when so we have a three task here. One, we have to update the user department, assign the user to department team, send email to users. So what's going to happen? What's so happening here? So if I expand this one, I'm just making a request here. So as you could see here, uh, do patch request information, and this is the my payload. So this is the request. So it hasn't completed. It hasn't this? I just initialized the request. I just created a request. Didn't do anything else. Uh, and then the same goes with the user uh, assigning user to. Um, uh, and that's the assigning user. Um, and then I said uh, assigning user to department team. So I said graph client, 
And this is the request to post permissions. This is a team membership request. And then send send email request as a default template. And at the end is a send email request. So our three requests are ready. So I haven't actually made a request. It's just I've I've prepared the request and now I, I created a batch request collection, content collection object. Uh, and this this gives you badge request content. So I need to add my all these requests uh, into that content. So you could see here, here I'm adding all my three requests for each user into that content. And this approach is not using the depend on. There's no ordering, but you can also handle this a different approach where you can, if you want to have like some dependency handling the dependency, you can also do that as well. We'll see, we'll look at it in, in a minute as well. So this is uh, because I don't need to, uh, I don't really care at this point whether which um, which requests get completed first. So uh, I just wanted to add that into the request collection. And once that's done, and this is why I'm executing the batch. So this batch is ha uh, this is what I'm executing. So now once it's executed, now if this point, uh, uh, so this is where I'm getting the uh, for and for each step, you can get the response separately. So for example, you can see a get response by ID. So that was the ID I. Uh, uh, you know, this is where I, rec I wanted a response for this one. So basically for each re uh, request separately, you can get the response and then do whatever you need to do. Uh, so I'm getting that. And then also I'm logging at the end, I'm logging into the SharePoint as well. The same information was has been all the tasks been completed in the Microsoft Graph. So, and that is where the magic is happening. And if uh, I have a more than 20, as we know is a limitation, then, um, the Microsoft Graph SDK handling automatically behind the scene, uh, so you don't have to worry about if you're sending uh, in here uh, your users. There are more than 20 in a list. So if let's suppose you pass 50, it will automatically convert into the uh, 20 20 batches behind the scene. So that's really really cool. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, from that side. If uh, and the other code is just usual and already submitted uh, in in the. Uh, sample wrappers. So yeah, that's all from me. If you have any question, oh, and there is a one. Sorry, I will just before I wrap over. I want to go back to the presentation so I can show you the uh, some useful links. So here's the useful links for batching and the PNP Core SDK which I use. And if I go and share uh, this, this is the link where you please go and have a look. Uh, so you, this is where you create the batch, simple batching which I used in the C shop. Uh, and there is a one batches with a dependent request as well. Uh, so this is a way you can implement like this. So yeah, that's all for me, guys. If you have any question. Mm -hmm.